Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today you join me in the 2023 BMW 128 Ti. A special edition hot hatch model brought out by BMW in 2020 to take on the likes of the Volkswagen Golf GTI. So whereabouts does it slot in to the hot hatch market? And being a front wheel drive car, is that sacrilege to the BMW name? Well, that's what I'm here to find out today. Well, the first thing to note is the TI moniker has been used for many years on a sporty BMWs. And they've kind of revived it a little bit recently for this. And it's nice, it's good to know that there's something between the standard trim levels and the M models. Now, of course, you've got the M135i, which does effectively use a tuned up version of this powertrain, but with four wheel drive. This one is exclusively front wheel drive and with an eight speed torque converter automatic. It's not quite as good as the ZF ones used on the more fancy BMWs though. So power output figures, 265 horsepower and 400 Newton meters of torque. And it's good for 0 to 60 in around 6.2 seconds through the front wheel drive. And it has a Torsen mechanical limited slip diff. So sadly, no manual option. So when they say it's for purists, there might be a few raised eyebrows there. In terms of economy, BMW claim around 40 MPG, but with mixed driving, Jason's seen around 35. Still not too bad, but considering some of those are motorway miles, your mileage may vary. But with any of these hot hatches, I do think kind of expect more towards the low 30s, to be honest. However, that LSD is standard, which I think is a really good thing. You also get on this model four pop brakes with 360 mil discs, which do have some decent stopping power. Prices have creeped up a little bit, unfortunately. Starts from about £38,000 now, although that's still a little bit cheaper than a new Mark 8 Volkswagen Golf GTI. It's around the same sort of money as a Leon Cupra 300, and it's significantly cheaper than something like a GR Yaris, currently over retail, and also a Civic Type R, which is a bit more hardcore. The level of equipment as standard is decent, but just bear in mind that some of the Korean rivals now in terms of family cars do come with much more tech from the get-go. This one has a couple of option packs that are all around 1,500 pounds each, one of them being the comfort pack, which includes things like keyless entry, electric tailgate, electric seats, and heated steering wheel. Uh, you can also get the pro pack, which adds some uh, fancy alloy wheels and also the Harman Kardon sound. And finally, there's the technology pack, which includes adaptive LED headlights, the head-up display, wireless charging for your phone, high beam assist, and also parking assist with a rear camera. Now, this one I'm driving today has a bit of a mishmash of options. I think it retailed probably about 40-ish, um, and it has things like heated steering wheel and Harman Kardon, but it doesn't have the electric tailgate, doesn't have reverse cam. Pan roof is also an 1,100 pound option. I would probably spec that because it is a little bit dark in here, but you know, it's preference at the end of the day. So let's talk about looks then. I'm not too keen on this generation of one series, I'll be completely honest with you. Now, the TI comes with a few bits of standard that other BMW one series cars don't. So you've got a few extra vents and that here and there, but the ones at the rear are fake, unfortunately, which is a little bit irritating. They do look okay, but it's just a shame that they're completely non-functional. Um, and the front ones are functional, thankfully, and it does add a bit of flair to the bumper and it borrows a few bits from the M135i. I do also prefer the blacked out vertical slats front grille as opposed to the one on the 135, which is like a mesh. I think this one looks better. And on the TI, you do get twin tail pipes at the back. But the one thing that I don't like about most TI models is it has the decals, which I don't think look particularly great. Uh, I don't know, there's just something about it. It looks a little bit garish. I'm not too keen on it, but thankfully this car has had them deleted and it looks a lot cleaner as a result. The wheels that it comes with standard are 18s and they used to be fitted from factory with Pilot Sport 4Ss on early cars, which I really am a fan of. They really help with the grip, especially on a front wheel drive car like this. Now, unfortunately, this one isn't fitted with those. They're now fitted with Pirelli P0s, which I'm not such a fan of, but there still could be far worse tires that they could have gone for. Yeah, overall, I just think the previous Gen 1 series does look like a better car. I think this will age a little bit worse, and I'm not sure. It looks almost like a squashed SUV. It's like a bit bulbous, but I don't know. It has grown on me a little bit, and this particular trim and this spec is great. Um, Jason, my friend who's lent me the car for today, has done a really good job with picking the specification of the car. All blacked out, looks really good, and the diamond cut wheels set it off. I do, however, like the lights. I think overall the car looks quite stealthy and it's definitely not unattractive by any stretch. Step inside and you're greeted with a really functional interior that's got a really nice simplistic design. 
The good thing about a lot of modern BMWs is they still haven't lost their touch in terms of the mechanical interfaces. You've still got physical buttons for a lot of different things, including all of the infotainment stuff. You've got the BMW iDrive system, which has the click wheel, which is really easy to use, as well as the touch screen. And you've also got physical climate controls and shortcut buttons. Comparatively, if you were to step into a current Volkswagen Golf GTI, everything is touch. It's all very irritating to use and quite clunky. Material quality is good too. You've got squishy stuff up here. Of course, being the entry level BMW, you still have some cheap, horrible plastics down the bottom, but it can totally be forgiven for the price range considering some of its rivals. And overall, I do think it's a much nicer place to sit than something like a Focus ST. And also it's gonna be a bit more quality in terms of the materials than your Volkswagen Golf GTI, Satellite Cupra, etc. It's definitely more plush than a Hyundai i30N as well. With this TI model, you've got lots and lots of extra red bits. You've got the TI moniker, embroidered in this center console. You've got red stitching everywhere, some red pipe work on the seats and also red piping on the floor mats, which that bit I think maybe looks a little bit too far. Um, and me and the owner have already talked about swapping those out just to tone it down a little bit in here. But overall, it does make it feel like a special car. And you've also got the M style seat belts as well, which do look really nice. I think the seats are quite plush and comfortable and there's a decent amount of adjustment. It is quite annoying though that at this price point, the chairs are completely manual. The only electric adjustment is the side bolsters, which is nice because they can hug you in a bit further. Overall, I like the climate controls. BMW's iDrive is definitely one of the best in the business in terms of infotainment. I do kind of prefer now some of the more simplistic and modern designs from Hyundai and things like that, but BMW just works really well. It's a very fluid interface. It's never laggy or crashes or anything like that. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And overall, it's just a really easy system to get used to, very functional. And of course, you've got the touchscreen as well as the kind of click wheel down here. So you can use it while driving a lot more safely. This digital cluster in front of me is very good as well. It's not quite as comprehensive as the Volkswagen Audi Group stuff, but the one advantage that we do get from it is that it does give you some information about the current playing song on CarPlay and give you some directions as well as map information. I really like the big chunky steering wheel, which is very typical of BMW, and it's got the physical controls on here, a nice heated steering wheel button at the bottom, and some paddles for when you want to take over the gearbox. There are just still some signs though that this is the entry level BMW. I'm not a big fan of the light controls either, the physical buttons. However, it is better than Volkswagen system yet again because it does away with all touch. I think overall layout and ergonomics really good. It's quite comfortable. Everything's angled towards me and in a way that I would be able to easily access it. Lots of physical buttons, which I adore and enough little cubbies here and there. There's a little bit of storage in the center console. You've got some cup holders up front there. Decent amount of space in the door bins, even though they are a little bit shallow and the glove compartment is what you'd expect of a car of this size. Overall, it's functional, it looks pretty good. There's just a few cost cutting measures here and there in terms of the materials and the plastics, but it can be forgiven. Space in the back, not too bad as well. There's enough headroom for me at six foot, which I was pleasantly surprised about. And although there's not much thigh support, there's decent amount of legroom. And the only thing that I would struggle with as an adult is sitting in the middle because there's a big transmission hump. But you know, if you've got a couple of kids back there or just the occasional adult passenger, you'll be absolutely fine. Nothing to complain about thanks to the shape of the car. The rear space in terms of cargo isn't too bad either. The seats fold nice and flat so you get a decent loading area. There is a bit of a load lip in the boot, but you've got a false floor which you can adjust and also put the uh, load cover underneath. And then underneath there, you've got a bit of storage to bung a few bits in as well. So overall, I would say not too bad at all. You've also got some USB-C charging in the back as well as Isofix points, which have the flip covers, which I quite like because you can't go losing them very easily. Overall, the interior quality is nothing to sniff at at all. It's better than a lot of its rivals in this segment. And I think it's quite a comfortable place to be and looks quite attractive as well. And at night, it's quite good with this bit of blue ambient lighting in the doors. So let's see how she drives then. As I say, you've got an eight speed torque converter. I'm gonna take manual control of it briefly here. The engine is punchiest in its mid-range. You can tell that's where the turbo is really happiest. It kind of runs out of steam at the top end. Um, you've got a little bit of turbo lag at the bottom, which I think is absolutely fine. Makes it quite nice to use. Gear shifts are okay, but they're not satisfying and snappy in the way that a DSG box is in something like a GTI or a Cupra. But they are quick though. Yeah. They're quick, they're just not snappy. 
But the good thing about manual control in a BMW is it will let you rev it out. It doesn't go automatically changing. You can also set it to manual on the sequential down here and use the shifter and it is inverted as it should be, uh, which is something that Volkswagen Audi Group has never been able to get right, even on their high-end cars, which is absurd to me. But BMW have always done it properly, thankfully. So that's very, very good. I'm in the sport mode at the moment, which pumps a bit more noise into the cabin. Exhaust note is okay. It's not great for a stock car though. It's definitely not as asbo as something like a um, Focus ST and obviously a GPF and things like that mean that that can't always be the case now. But, you know, it just is a bit of a shame that that's, that's something we're still kind of encountering. Right, let's see. Let's unleash some of the torque around here. Not much understeer at all. The, the diff is, the diff hooks up really well. <laughs> You can feel that there's quite a bit of torque behind the engine. It's not quite as uh, kind of responsive off the line as a 135i, obviously, because it's not uh, all-wheel drive. But this front-wheel drive and this diff, I've really find enjoyable. It's, you know, as I say, the gearbox, it's, it's a little bit of a shame. I think it's what lets the car down a little bit. I think in terms of the driving experience, having one of those higher-end ZF boxes or even something like the DSG sort of boxes that Volkswagen, Audi, and you know, they all fit to their cars. I think they work really well as well now because they've been tuned very specifically to not be very jerky around town. It used to be the problem with a dual clutch box that it'd be really jerky around town. That's why BMW always stuck with kind of torque converter style boxes. Um, and this one, don't get me wrong, it's not slow to change. It feels almost like a dual clutch box to change, but it's just not got that satisfying jolt between gears. Um, it feels almost too smooth a bit like you know like a Merc box or something it's kind of geared more towards a luxurious experience and it doesn't provide any of those like upshift sort of DSG farts if you like like the upshift sounds and things like that which takes away a bit of the drama of the car I mean this is in its sportier setting right now um, and there's no adaptive dampers as standard which is a bit of a shame although the suspension is 10 millimeters lower than the standard car and a little bit stiffer they have also made some uh, changes to the rear suspension on the basis that this is front biased being a front wheel drive car compared to the 135i and you can feel that when you go along in terms of the ride quality i would say it's quite good like that's what probably makes this stand out a little bit amongst the crowd because the ride quality is comfortable enough overall that you wouldn't complain about this as a daily driver the sportiness is just kind of an addition but that kind of takes away from the purest aspect of it you know the whole point of making a front wheel drive kind of purest hot hatch with this sort of power is that you want a little bit of a more sporty edge um, and you know I think obviously a Civic Type R is much more hardcore and much more expensive as is a Yaris GR this should enable me to do a decent launch let's go wow not bad at all it did hook up again you do get a bit of torque steer but the stability control system and the steering, the electronic steering, actually kind of helps you fight the torque steer, which is quite impressive and it does work quite well. Um, there does seem to be less wheel hop as well than in something like a front wheel drive Cupra. Now I do think having proper launch control in other cars is a little bit better, um, but you know, BMW allow you to do things a little bit more manually and that is quite nice for someone who is a bit more of a purist. Uh, let's test the kick down of this eight speed little bit delayed but not terrible at all and it did go down a good few ratios there i do also quite like with these smaller wheels that it really soaks up some of the potholes like the roads are terrible here in the uk at the moment and driving my audi with 20s on i just constantly hit things and feel like i've broken the whole car and this is a lot more of a supple experience as a daily driver what i'm going to do now is i'm going to chuck it down some more complex roads and see what it's actually capable of. So I do quite like a front wheel drive car, to be honest, to chuck around. I think rear wheel drive can be good fun, but it can be a bit dicey at times, especially on some of the roads we have here in the UK. Um, front wheel drive kind of pulls you along. It feels very willing. And there's something about having a high powered front wheel drive car and having to wrestle that torque steer and that kind of thing. So I'm not the sort of person who's gonna scoff at BMW for, oh, it should have been a rear wheel drive car because you know, everyone's driving M140s and wrapping them around trees and things like that. You know, those are great cars, don't get me wrong. And, you know, a lot of people will choose that instead of spending more money on this because you can go and get a pre-owned one cheap and it's got a B58 straight six and all that kind of thing. But if you're looking at a new car and, you know, let's just, let's give it a bit of, decent amount of texture through the wheel. And the steering is typically 
relatively heavy BMW style, which I don't mind. Quite direct, quite responsive, quite immediate. It does, however, on these roads feel softer than, say, an i30N. <laughs> Bit of tall steer there. It handles it really well, though. There's such a willingness from the front end. You can feel a bit of rotation through the rear, but I wouldn't say it's a car you can get very immediate lift off over steering. And it's obviously not as hardcore as a Civic Type R. I don't think it's quite as sharp as a Focus ST, but it is more plush and livable day to day than both of those cars. And it comes in cheaper than the majority of its rivals as well. Like I said, about a thousand pound, 1500 quid, most of the time cheaper than a Volkswagen Golf GTI. And that's quite impressive really especially because all the tech in here is much more usable. No reversing cam as well. It's just mm, mm, on a 40 grand car is a bit. Oh, yeah, it's got a bit of torque when you want it to. I do quite like this. Quite a nice bit of induction sound as the turbo kicks in. I do like that as a standard kind of feature. Talks there again. <laughs> it's quite confidence inspiring this, the handling to be fair and that diff is is impressive for what it does and even at quite high speed when you really plant it you can feel that it wants to talk steer a little bit so I imagine if it was mapped up it would do that a lot right I think it's time we should try the brakes Wish me luck. They work. <laughs> bit of tire slip there. Yeah, I think front wheel drive just makes it a bit more of an engaging experience than a M135, but you are gonna be fighting it a little bit more. And also in terms of the kind of like off the line capabilities it's not going to be as strong but as we've already demonstrated it's not as terrible as a lot of the other cars in terms of wheel hop are you getting a, a, a you know a Cupra or a Golf or something sometimes the wheel hop off the line is pretty awful from factory well you got some rotation there did you see that a little bit asbo when you want it to it's just missing that drama of like you know an i30n or something where you let off and it goes bang bang bang, bang pop 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 and you know when you change gear and you get those big farts on the upshift that's what i'm missing this and maybe that's just me being a bit of a yob but you know i think that's what hot hatches are all about it's unleashing that but this is a nice compromise you know let's get these windows up and go back into comfort mode and then it just becomes a bit more of a serene cruiser again. And I've got my BMW i drive and I've got Isofix points in the back and it's all very pleasant, you know? It's something I do miss driving a four wheel drive car. Now that I've got a sort of four wheel drive hot hatch, if you like, yes, it just grips and goes. And yes, it's better in the snow when we have two days of snow a year, but it's not as exciting as this. And this is the raw hot hatch experience. I think this is a really good option because if you're looking at the Golf GTI, the Golf GTI is slightly more expensive than this, and yeah, I think maybe it is a little bit better looking, and yes, also, you know, it might be just a little bit more practical for your day-to-day -day needs, but this is more of an overall package. You get more luxuries on the inside, it's easier to live with, you don't get all of that horrible touch stuff all the time, all those buttons that don't work properly. This is a bit more of the old school, but combined with the newer tech, and I think it's a really good option. If you want something that's more hardcore, then spend a bit more, get a Civic Type R, or look at a used i30N. The i30N, I, I love that car so much. It's just really, really, you know, it, it's just it's just so violent, and that's what a hot hatch should be, in my opinion. Uh, Focus ST is another great option, but it's a little bit car park me, isn't it? It's not as grown up as a BMW, and I think that's something that's really important. I think it's one of those things where if you're if you're wanting to kind of just have spontaneous moments of fun but 
still be able to just enjoy a day-to-day -day car that's just nice. It's just a BMW 1 Series. When you stop hooning about and being silly, it just works, right? It just works as your daily driver and it looks sophisticated. It's not too over the top in terms of its design, especially with this, this kind of stealthy look that we've got on this spec here. I honestly think it's worth having a look at if you're in the market for a hot hatch. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Jason for lending me the car for the day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.